I'll start by introducing myself. Um, my name is Pace de Klein. I'm a director of engineering with the ST Engineering iDirect. And um, maybe just to, to warm up with the audience a bit more, um, by show of hands, who has been using the uh, internet access over satellite? A uh, couple of hands still. That's, that's more than I expected. <laughs> Because we often think of uh, internet connectivity as something where uh, that's abundantly available. We are all uh, connected over cable, but uh, there are a lot of areas still where there is no cable available, any type of cable, fiber, copper, uh, coax uh, cabling. Um, and there it's still uh, satellite that will provide us connectivity um, where there is nothing else left. So, Today I wanted to uh, guide you into what we do as um, ST Engineering iDirect. Um, who we are, what we create, what we make, what we bring to the market, and what are our transition challenges, and how does uh, OpenShift uh, fit in, that, uh, in those uh, transition challenges. And you'll see, I'll talk about uh, five major challenges that we are looking at uh, right now. And in four or five, I see a direct connectivity or a direct link, let's say, with what OpenShift is doing today. And I would like to uh, conclude all this by um, providing you some insights of what we've done so far and how we are uh, moving along. So yeah, who are we? We are a global um, company with a local connection. So we have three major headquarters, uh, two for engineering in um, uh, Herndon, that's the Washington area, and in Sydney Glass, a very tall, a small city between Antwerp and Ghent, for people who know uh, Belgium. And we have a hub in Singapore, where our mother company is located as well. And of course, uh, different locations where we can provide support and um, sales. Who are our customers? Well, the major um, leading satellite operators and service providers. So that can be satellite providers that offer a global uh, coverage or providers that uh, specialize in sp uh, specific use cases and in um, specific uh, geographical areas. Um, it also means, and you might already notice it, but I'll come back to that uh, a couple of times today, uh, we are not an operator ourselves. We provide functionality, tooling, equipment for our customers to... Um, see, it's very tricky, this one. Um, so we provide that tooling for our customers to operate and service their networks. Which are the markets where we operate? Well, it can go from a single um, home B2C type of connectivity where we connect uh, with a regular modem, as you have a modem at, ho at home, uh, most likely as well, but instead of connecting to a fiber or connecting to a uh, coax cable, we just connect to the coax cable on a small dish and you connect to our networks. But of course, we also have uh, enterprises that use us as either as backup links or a main link to, to connect between branch offices. Um, we are also active in the uh, telco market as a backhaul. Um, imagine yourself as a telco, uh, you want to roll out 4G, 5G networks, you have all these nice antennas locally deployed, and then you need a backhaul connection towards your core network, and you are deploying in either uh, quite hilly or mountainous terrain, uh, you need to cross swamps or large rivers, and pulling all these cables will be very costly. In that case, backhaul connectivity, and this is going way too fast, Backhaul connectivity, um, yeah. backhaul connectivity from um, the antenna to, uh, to the 5G antenna to the backhaul network can also run over satellite. Okay. One of the uh, our latest, well, not latest, but uh, maybe the ones that that um, is our most uh, challenging or inspiring ones is connecting aircraft. Uh, you might have been on a flight, um, most likely a transcontinental flight, lots of hours on the plane, and you still want to enjoy connectivity. That plane as well is connected to satellites uh, in order to provide that internet access. But of course, it's not only um, for internet access. I'm going to put this one away because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, 
Um, it's not only for uh, internet access for the uh, onboard equipment or for the passengers, especially also in the connected vessel um, environment. You'll see that we will uh, provide connectivity to crew members, to passengers on large cruise ships, uh, but also to all these sensors that are collecting data that are that is requirement for for safety for regulations and to be able to um, bring that all that connectivity back to um, the main station to for the process and to for instance use AI on top of it as we show uh, see in the previous presentation. Now that's that's an overview of our markets. I'm not touching anything now. Can we? <laughs> Go back, or let's leave it at this. It's fine, um, but leave this one on for for a minute. Um, so we are in 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 a, in a big transition. Um, in that, um, this is a view on on the network that we build uh, with our customers, and you'll see basically two two sides. Um, let's see. Come on. My left-hand side, that should be your right-hand side, right? Um, we see the connectivity in the, with the end users. So there we have modems connecting to typically a smaller dish up to the satellites. And you'll see our first transition there, um, those, those four acronyms stacked, LEO, MEO, GEO, HEO. These are the acronyms stating on how high is that satellite in the sky. Typically, we have the, uh, the old systems with geo, geostationary satellites, um, one fixed location uh, above the Earth. You point it once and you're good to go. But of course, it's far away, it takes a lot of delay and jitter, and, and, and uh, it's not easy, uh, or it's not that comfortable to uh, achieve high bandwidth. So we went lower and lower with LEO and MEO, and even elliptical orbits around the poles, because everywhere we want to have coverage. And that's the first transition for us. But in this case, I don't see a lot of um, help from, from OpenShift uh, entering here. What is happening on the left-hand side, and that's our core network, that's where the most interesting part is. And in blue is maybe the most typical transition that you see in, in a lot of um, industries. That's where we want to transition from uh, virtual network functions into uh, cloud-native functions. Um, that's where we see an obvious uh, use case for uh, OpenShift, where we want to bring our system as a product to the customer and want to evolve our product while it is deployed in the field. So we want to have a system that's capable of running both types of workloads, uh, containers and virtual machines. But on right in that, that, that uh, light uh, green, you'll see what we call virtual basement functions. And virtual basement functions are those functions or baseband functions, I should say, uh, as they are also depicted first as physical network functions, are devices that we currently build. It's, it's tailor-made hardware and software combination that actually takes in a physical signal and transitions it into a, um, an IP packet in both directions, depending if you're sending or receiving from satellite, obviously. And as with everything where we go from a transition from hardware to software, we also see a future of uh, those PNFs evolving into virtual functions. And then the question is, how are we going to deploy those? Are we also going to deploy it in um, standard off-the-shelf hardware? Are we going to move it to public clouds as well? Um, what about hardware acceleration? Currently, there's a lot of FPGA power in there to process that signal. Can OpenShift provide us access to those uh, FPGAs? Can we easily schedule workloads? So these are one of the questions that we are looking into as well. On the far side, um, you also notice 5G uh, visible there. I'll come back to that in the, in the slides in a minute. Um, which basically means telco networks are evolving as well. And where in the past, every type of network, uh, satellite, uh, wired networks, um, terrestrial wireless networks like 3G, they own, all had a, their own way of managing the networks. 5G is becoming the um, overall system of managing telco networks. So I've seen a lot of 5G being mentioned as a supplier of, um, or as, as a use case of OpenShift. And that's 
there will be, and I'll, I'll show you the next slide as well, there will be a, a lot of, uh, I, I do see a lot of commonalities in where OpenShift can be used to be used in, in 5G RAN systems, where we can also be used in our uh, radio networks. And then at the bottom you'll see um, the picture of a teleport uh, data center and uh, the cloud region. Today, when we deploy our products, it's all in a teleport. And teleport is basically the site where we put on the large dishes, where we um, aggregate all the signals um, together and then start processing it. I'm starting to think that I made something automated in there. Automation is fine, but not in this case. Um, so, picking in here, so in the teleport, uh, we are currently deploying our systems with all the processing on board uh, locally. Uh, and that's where OpenShift is today deployed as we speak. We're actually running it in operations like that. But of course, multi-cloud is, is and hybrid cloud is also an environment where we want to look into our opportunities. And there you'll see that I slightly blurred the OpenShift logo. Um, because and I'm, I'm looking forward to see what, what the, the contacts in the coming days will bring up as, as new news. But the typical or the use case that we are discussing here today with a telco uh, use case where we want to process data running through our system because our system could be seen as one large switch or one uh, large router is not the typical use case or initial typical use case of an OpenShift system. So um, on bare metal deployments we have everything in place to leverage things like Azure IV, TPTK, um, uh, over time, maybe uh, hardware acceleration on FPGAs or, or GPUs and TPUs, what have you. But what about on public clouds? And um, what about on data centers um, that are deployed on edge but are still um, using public cloud technology? And there we still have our doubts on will we be able to leverage every, all, all the hardware acceleration and performance uh, improving uh, aspects that we also have available on bare metal deployments. So that's definitely something that we will need to uh, look into and to uh, further explore. So looking forward to, um, to that path. And if I hear today as well on the roadmap that uh, this is still evolving and, and still being invested in, I'm also very interested to see how this, how this will go. Now, now I would like to move to the next slide. Oh, that goes. Ah. So 5G SATCOM conversions, that's also one of the things that was uh, buried on that side of, of the system. So uh, again, in the middle, you see our satellite system. But on the right-hand side, you see the, 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 the four, um, well, in our case, the three conversions of domains. Today, we deploy it as something where we can backhaul the system, meaning satellite link is there as a transparent link to the 5G system. Where we want to evolve to, and what we are actively working on, is to first get our terminal in there as an, um, a 5G terminal. We're still using our own communication over satellite, but all the, um, all the management and control plane uh, in order to enable that link is still done, or is in that case done, over a 5G core. And we know we have all seen examples of 5G cores deployed using OpenShift, even on public clouds. So I see a nice uh, collaboration uh, and a sharing of knowledge there. But the third one is maybe the most uh, challenging one. That's where we will fully move to also a waveguide form. So the actual wireless signal over satellite that is fully in line with the uh, 5G consortium. And in that case, we are full building a full end-to-end -end, uh, network link, um, 5G specific, but over satellite. Coming back up to what we are actually building and how OpenShift is in there today. So, right hand side is, and it's, I know it's, it's, it's uh, mirrored around with the other drawing, but this right hand side, for me, left for you, the big racks, I should say, um, these are the, the, the solutions that we currently deploy, actually sell, and have our, our customers operate in the central teleports. And you see two racks. The right-hand side rack is the, um, uh, can I go back? Yes. Uh, the right-hand side is the processing part. It's purely software, and that's where we embedded OpenShift, and that's how we ship it to the field. 
the left hand side is a baseband processing rack that is today is still um, embedded hardware that we create with embedded leaks on top, um, fully physical network functions. And then on the other side, you'll see the modems, depending on if you're a home user, it's a small, lean, uh, cheaper modem. If you're a high demanding uh, customer, um, then we'll end up with the, the lowest model or the and it's, and it's like at least the highest uh, in, in performance and we'll offer you that. But what is, what is really key here to grasp is we're an equipment manufacturer and vendor. We sell this stack uh, to our customers. It means that we also ship OpenShift as an embedded feature inside the stack. So we need to be able to send out all this as a package to the customer and as a matter of speaking, the customer needs to pull in the plug and he's uh, good to go. And of course he needs to stack all the servers, connect all the wires, stuff like that. But a lot of, done, of that is done already in the factory. But using OpenShift like this still brings um, quite some challenges. And I need to speed up, it seems. Um, so um, why did we select um, OpenShift? Well, for security reasons, we didn't want to build our own uh, Kubernetes stack. Um, we do have some pop cost challenges. We want to make it as lean and small as possible. And um, we thought, and we want to have uh, access to accelerated networks. We want to make sure that we can um, leverage uh, Azure IoV. We want to have, over time, access to FPGA support. And of course, we want to be able to um, run virtual machines and containers uh, alongside. Now, there is one um, thing uh, even more uh, challenging, and that's the fact that we want to bring this to the field, operate in the field with low production impact, and making sure that um, this system can run for five, seven, maybe 10 years on its own, because we sold this to our customers, right? And so in the end, what we did, um, and I'll be very brief because I need to stop, I see. Um, we created a productized, productized Kubernetes. OpenShift on its own is already a productized Kubernetes. We put out our, our own layer on top so that basically um, we use OpenShift as an abstraction layer on top of uh, our hardware. We want to be, and one of the challenges I still want to pitch here is relocatable clusters were really hard for us because once you deploy your OpenShift cluster, you cannot change your IP address. But we want to create this in our factory uh, and then ship it into the field. And at only at that point in time, and most likely one or two days later, we get the IP plan for our customer. So we need to be able to change our uh, networks in the field. So we came up with a design where we could have an immutable network internally and an external network that we can uh, change. All this is actually a product that we develop in-house, so it also needs to adhere to our uh, CIDI, uh, sorry, uh, CICT um, demands. So we basically also build all this during the night. So every night we bring up a cluster, we add nodes to the cluster, we test the functionality of the system, and we make sure that we, every upgrade that we do internally, it all still works. And in conclusion, um, just bring you a uh, Nice drawing, it's not only a power point. We actually have this running today in the field and our first customers that are using this are our own teams that will update their own uh, software CI/CD pipelines only when we give them the green light that we have a new release of OpenShift internally available for them for consumption. And with that, I want to close it here. Thank you for your attention. Um, we are still hiring, so if all this journey is interesting to you, do reach out on our website. Thank you.